Namaste, good morning, and thank you for joining me today. This is about an 80 minute, uh, 90 minute practice Dharma Yoga. So please, as always, practice according to your condition and your abilities, respect your limitations, and keep on thinking that the practice is an offering. Everything that you're feeling is being felt by all beings, so be careful what you put out there. Like Dharmaji said, watch out and be conscious, practice consciously and mindfully. So on that note, let's begin. Sit tall and straight. Begin and close the eyes. Bring the attention in. Before creation, what existed? God was always there in the midst of it all. And will still be there in beyond the ends of this universe. Attune your mind to the supreme divine consciousness now. practice through our senses. May we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Or may for peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. To make this practice even more powerful, more meaningful, and even better than meditation, renounce all the fruits of the practice. Imagine this as your divine duty to all beings everywhere. 
So let's begin with the mantra for purification to purify the space, the clouds, and all the psychic channels within. If you know it, do it with conviction and volume so it can be heard by all the subtle bodies within and all around. If you don't know it, move your lips, pretend you're chanting it through the, uh, the voice of the guru. You derive all the benefits as though you're chanting it perfectly. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Toki Wa Yahas Maritandrika Cham Sabarya Dihantra Ha Sujihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Toki Wa Yahas Maritandrika Cham Sabarya Dihantra Ha Sujihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yahas Maritandrika Cham Sabarya Dihantra Ha Sujihi Now, let's start off with pure um, um, spiritual breathing in order to connect, uh, establish a deep connection with the divine within. Bring your arms up, the palms turned upwards. From the fingertips, inhale the best of best down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Two, three, four. Feel yourself being flooded by all that you need. Six, seven, eight. Holding it in the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart. Hold the breath there. Three, four, five, six. Exhale, just the breath leaves. Everything that you pulled in stays with him. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale down again through the arms into the spiritual heart. Three, four, bringing the best of the best. Five, six, seven, eight. Hold it again in the heart. Hold the breath there. Exhale up to the fingertips. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One last time. Inhale everything that you need. Attract it to the spiritual heart. Use your attention to bring it there. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, holding it in the heart, hold the breath and the attention at the spiritual heart. Exhale out to the arms, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the arms down now. Let's do purifier Kamayama. So imagine that you're bringing all the purifying effects all throughout the body, bring them all the way up to the spine, to the crown. On the exhale, expel all the impurities that exist at all levels, the mental, physical, and spiritual levels. Left hand, Yana Mudra, right hand is uh, Vishnu Mudra, second third finger scroll down to the palm, and then when you turn the palms, the palm towards you, you use the thumb for the right nostril, right ringer for the left, just as a note, when the palm is turned towards you, it's no longer Vishnu Mudra. So we'll sit up tall and straight, for the breath retention, the count is four, four on the inhale, 12 on the uh, breath retention, eight on the exhale, by the way, bound the breath retention, apply the locks at the root, for the root lock, contract the buttocks, imagine you're lifting the whole pelvic floor up, push the belly button up and in. And for the root lock, uh, for the throat lock, inhale, when you inhale, you want to lift your chest as much as possible, so when you bring your chin down on your chest for the breath retention, your back stays straight, try not to hunch the back. The tongue to the roof mouth behind the teeth will seal off the lock. The attention is at the space between the eyebrows. For the exhale, empty the air out the lungs. Be completely empty by the eighth count. So let's begin. Breathe out completely. Remember to sit up tall. Inhale through both nostrils. Three, raise the chest. Four, hold the breath. Chin on the chest. Third eye attention. Jalandala Bandha, Mula Bandha. Throat lock, root lock. Up through the left side, expel all the impurities up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale through both nostrils. Three, four, hold the breath. Three, everything stops. All the attention to space in the eyebrows. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale up through the left side. Two, Three, four, five. Gradual exhale. Seven, eight. Again, inhale. Three, inflate the lungs. Raise the chest. 
pull the breath out to the chest. All the mind activity, the body movement, and emotion is all those frozen. Mentally count to 12. Keep the count always even. Exhale out left. Last time, inhale. Fill up the lungs, raise the chest. Hold it all in now. to observe the state of the body, the mind, and the emotions. Be the eternal witness watching everything without any expectations of what you should or should not observe, without any attachment to the results as to what it should deliver. Now to stimulate the chakras, imagine they're like gates. And you're trying to open up the gates in order for the energy to pass all the way up. The energy, however, cannot be released unless you are in adherence to ethical rules. So once, and when you're firmly establishing them at some point, the energy will be released. It can go all the way up to the spine to the crown. It is said that once that energy reaches the crown, it may trigger divine bliss. So we keep trying, we keep on being in adherence to yama and niyama, the ethical precepts. So we're starting at the base of spine, picture, each um, bring your attention to those areas and visualize a color that's associated with it being flooded uh, flooding that area so it's uh, two sets of seven tones repeat after me call and response style starting at the base of spine muladhara chakra the color is red lam 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 repeat Lam 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 lam. Repeat. Go now to the next one, just a little bit above it. The Swahidana chakra. The color is orange. Bam 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 bam. Bam 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 bam. Now bring your attention to the navel chakra. The color is yellow. This is called Manipura chakra in Sanskrit. Ram, 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 ram. Ram, 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 ram. Do it with volume. It could be heard by the subtle bodies within the chakras. Next, Anahata, the heart, the color green. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Repeat. The base of throat now, the color blue. Vishuddha. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, 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 hum. The third eye, Anya, the color is indigo. Om, 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 om. Om, 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 om. Lastly, the crown. The color is violet. The sound is, um, the, the sound is om, but it's a long sustained om. Just allow the sound to rise the breath. The, so now the attention at Sahasrara, Sahasrara, the crown chakra. Inhale. 
trying to make the sound reach the ends of the universe and all beings in it. Visualize the om in your mind, like symbol, however you want to picture it. Maybe it's made of jewel, may it be jeweled, maybe it's a big golden om. Visualize it very clearly in your mind. Whenever the mind escapes the image, just keep bringing it back in your mind. Keep on trying to make the mind one point and control the mind, and the mind will control. And now try to feel the vibrations emanating from that home. And continue to hear the sounds made up of all the infinite sounds, but somehow they all still sound harmonious. They say that the home contains all the sounds, the colors, and vibrations of the universe. Be fully immersed in them now. infiniteness of those sounds, colors, and vibrations. It can be analogous to the infiniteness of God and God's wisdom and compassion. Ultimately, that is our nature too. So through the practice, try to see the infinite, that divine, infinite, stainless being in all forms. Revere and love them all, for they are all divine. Beings are all divine manifestations. So now let's bring that into the practice as we start the asana practice. Come to stand up. So we'll start off with some warm ups, prepare the body for the practice. Start the hands on the hips, circle the head, take the head to the left, large circles. The ears touching the shoulders, the chin to the chest, the back of the head to the top of the back. And then switch the direction of rotation. Please don't have very heavy rolling all the way around your neck. And now shake up the fans, move the hands very, very rapidly, like in no control of the hands. So you're moving all by themselves. Then up and down, you shouldn't be able to see your fingers are like a blur, they're moving so fast. Good, now feel as though the arms are dead, and shake all the joints in your upper body, the head find all the directions. Move as fast as you can, generate some heat. And then slow it down. And then from here, the right arm swings backwards, and then forward. Feel as though you're holding weight to five pounds in the hand to make the arm swing more easily. Left arm, winding up as though you're preparing to throw a ball, and then go forward. Now both arms up. Turn to the right, arms come down, turn to the left, arms come back up, and continue. And then start again up high, this time start going, turn to the left as the arms come down, and then turn to the uh, right as the arms come back up. Come back up, take hold the opposite elbows, bend to the left. Try not to make folds in the left side of the body. Come back up, go to the other side. Push the hips and lift up towards the left. 
all the way up the other side of the bot and go to your left again. Pull the elbows, try not to bend, uh, hunch forward and go to the other side. Come back up to the center, release the arms. This one's called Breath of Joy. You have to do it with enthusiasm to make it live up to its name. First two movements on the inhale, last one, um, you're throwing the body down. Imagine you're throwing all the negativity out with it. Looks like this. Join me. Allow the belly to hit the thighs. One more. So stay here now, allow the bicep down to start shaking. And then roll your way back up. Next one. Hands by sides, body, feet together. Zoom, jumping, jump up very high if you can. Come right up off the floor. If you have any knee issues, you can just bounce them off your, uh, just lift up the heels up and down. Press the toes into the ground. But you can jump higher. Arms up by the sides of the body, just for the hips. If you need to, you can bring the left hand on the wall. Throw the right leg back and forth. Try to get your knee to the shoulder, the toes to the back of the head. And then the other leg. If you can, throw the head back. Try to arch the back a little bit, and the leg goes back. Lean forward as the leg comes forward. And then release. Feet now together, hands by sides of body. Inhale, lift the arms up, lift the heels up at the same time as the arms are coming up. Exhale, come down gracefully. Try not to drop the heels down heavily. Inhale, come up again. Hollow up the navel, engage the core and the leg muscles. Exhale, push the roots to the toes into the mat. Lower the heels down. Inhale, come up. Very high. Imagine you're the eternal witness. Again, watching the body move all by itself. Come down. Watch the mental reactions and emotions as well. With no judgment, no expectation. Be unbothered, unjudging. Exhale, come back down. And one more. Inhale, come up. Move gracefully. And exhale back down. Remember the practice is an offering, so make it the best the best that you can. Chin on the chest in a gesture of humbleness. Sustain this humble mindset throughout the practice. Do the practice simply because it must be done for the well-being of all. Now come to the front of the mat. Hands to the heart, Surya Namaskara. Imagine we're all together physically moving like a school of fish. Stay in the mind of offering. Raise your arms up over the head, arch back. Fold the body down, bend your knees if you need to, but bring hands on the ground. Right foot back, lower down the knee, drop down to the seat. Then come into the high plank, lower the knees down, and the seat goes all the way back. Glide between the arms, touch your nose to the ground, pull the elbows aside the body, and then lift the head, bring it all the way back. Take the seats back again. Come forward. Pull the floor towards you. Roll the shoulders back. Try not to lose your neck as you bring your head back. And one more time, take the seat back. Imagine a snake gliding through the grass and then coiling majestically. Imitate the movements. Back into other movements of anasana. Lift the seat, allow the head to come down. Soften the line in the back. And then the right foot steps forward to the hands, drop down to the seat. Feet then come together, chest on the thighs, head down. So if that was a difficult um, transition, you can bring the left knee down first, and then if the foot doesn't make it all the way, use the right hand to glide the foot forward. Move according to your condition. Raise your arms up over the head, arch back. Come back, call the hands to the heart. Go up and back again, stretch the whole front of the body. And then come down, head close to the feet, chest on the thighs. Left foot goes back. Into the high plank, knees down, the seats all the way back. Come forward again. Imagine having that boundless range of motion as a serpent. Put yourself in this body. 
as you can see, back again. Come forward, tap into all the qualities, the regal and wise of the serpent, fierce and fearless. One more time, take a seat back. Come forward, three times less and beyond the nose can imitate the forms at all levels, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Imagine every given form that you're teaching. Take a seat all the way back, the head comes down. If you can, you can touch forehead to the ground. And left foot forward to the hands. Feet together, Utanasana. Right up to standing. Rear down over the head. Come back home. Go up and back. Breathe naturally. Don't worry about the breath. Move the body. The breath will follow. And do a little more power and ease to the movements. Right foot back. Drop down to the seat. Into the plank. Hashtanga Namaskar. Knees, chest, forehead down. As you come forward, your hips come to your head. Lift your hips and knees away from the ground. Charge the, charge the legs. Work with the dog how you can move your stay moment your pulse. Imagine trying to fold the body in half. It hinges at the top of the legs. Back into Adho Samarasana. Lift your feet, allow the heart to come down towards the ground, the belly towards the thighs. Bounce here again. Look like a dog stretching its back. Exhibit the loyalty of the dog to its master. Bring down the right foot steps to the head, drop down to the feet. Then Uttanasana, belly to your thighs, head down. Come right to standing, cross to Uttanasana, come back home. Go up and back. You have to put yourself in the practice you're trying to achieve with constant dis practice and angry determination will allow the left foot back into the high plank. We'll all have the, um, the experience, we'll have the chance to experience everything. Reach chest, forehead down. Right into upward facing dog again. Roll the shoulders back, look like a dog howling at the moon. Don't lose your neck again. Drop your shoulders down, extend the neck out of the shoulders, and drop down the hips. Mm, back into Adho Mukha Samanasana now. Look like a stride at the playground. Steep at the top, shallow at the bottom. Try not to bend the arms. Curve your back. And then the left foot steps forward to the hands. Feet together, Uttanasana. Bow down at the level of this. Come up again. Every posture has a consciousness. Tap into it. Go up and back. Turn the seats. Open yourself up to divine grace. And then bow down in humility. Uttanasana. Push your feet up. Try to get your legs straight. Your body stays at your thighs low. Right foot back. Tuck them down. Drop down to the seat. Flatten out the toes here. Inhale, come up. The arms. Drop the seat forward. Circle the arms down. Lean away from the leg. Inhale, come up again. You can remember just warm ups. Drop your seat forward, circle your arms down, and the head goes back. And one more time, raise your arms up, drop your seat forward, allow the head to come down. Uh, back, and then come into high plank here. You can do chaturanga if you prefer, into upward facing dog. Lower down, hovering just above the ground, push into your hands, and roll over your toes into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Samanasana. Now this time your right leg comes up. Be like a dog. Set the foot between the hands. Move the shoulders over the fingertips so the foot doesn't land the big heavy thud. Lower the seat right close to the front heel, but then lift up again. Raise your arms up. Drop your seat forward again against the front heel. Inhale, come up again. Stretch. Take the body all the way back. Clean away from the leg. One more time. Inhale, come up. Open yourself up to divine grace and for divine service. And then the left foot comes up to meet the right. Push the body into your leg. Try to get your seat directly in line with the heels if you're more flexible. Legs straight. You come up to standing. You jump in back. Hands up to the heart. Wherever you are, however, is perfect if you're trying your best. Raise your arms up. It's the effort that's most important. The intention behind the practice, not the result. Uttanasana. Left foot back. Back knee down. Flat out the toes. Inhale, come up. This time we're turning to the right as your arms come down. Inhale, float the arms up, toes up your body on the hips, turn again to the right. You're making a gesture here of being receptive to all experiences you have something to gain from each and every one. Turn forward into high plank, into the chaturanga, ashtanga namaskara, all good. Down we go. Thank you, into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Samanasana. And now the left leg comes up, be like a dog, and step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, 
Flatten up the toes, inhale, come up with the arms, turn to your left. Inhale, and picture your body moving gracefully the way you want to see it move. The body will perhaps obey based on itself. You become what you see in your imagination. So cultivate a balanced imagination. Right foot to left, you're always expanding, always going. Up we go. After the Tanasana, come back home. Let's add on now. Raise your hands up, reach up high. It's time to come down, bend your knees, your belly on your thigh. Push your body into your legs, send your hands over your shoulders, all the way up. You can't do them together. Then right foot back. Back knee down, drop down to the seat, Kapyasana. Raise your hands up, pull your hands all the way back. Stretch the whole front of the body. And you come back down. Let's try another transition. Swing your left leg all the way up into Ekapada Adho Mukha Sivanasana right away. Come into high plank. Shoulders stay over the, are over the fingertips. And as you're coming down, see if you can bring, keep your leg up for the other side of the body. If it's too much, lower your knee at the same time as your chest is lowering. And then right into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Then the right leg comes up. Connect all the movements together seamlessly. Seamlessly like you're doing a divine dance of devotion. The right foot between the hands, raise your hands up and pull your hands all the way back. Take your body all the way back away from the front leg. Come forward again, belly on your thigh, join your hands together, and then left foot knee to right. Uttanasana, bow down. Come up again. And back home. Again, raise your hands up. Bury your lungs deep in the heart. Watch your body move with even more power, grace, and ease. Chest on the side, the hands right up over your shoulders, the face to the shins if your legs are straight. Left foot goes back. When your hands release, try not to touch your fingers to grasp you, sweep them up and behind your head. Cut the asana if that's too much point to point. Good, now come back down. Hands plant on either side of the right foot, and your right foot immediately goes up and back. Come forward into your high plank with your leg up if you can. Lower down. You can push the roots of your left toe, elbows into the side of the body, turn the fingers out, so you can lower down with control. Right knee to upward facing dog, back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Again, practice according to your abilities. Left leg up, step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, drop down to the seat, arms all the way up and back. Try to get them to the side or behind your ears even. Stretch and come forward. Swing your hands behind the back. Hold the breath, right foot comes into your left softly, Uttanasana. Come back up to standing, swing your hands over the head, arch back. Come back home. Imagine your shape shift and moving to your forms gracefully. Reach up and back, bend your knees, your belly on your thighs, swing your hands over your head, face to the shins again if you can. If your legs are straight, right leg back into Kapriyasana. Stretch your arms all the way back, remind your index finger going up the back toes. And then come back down. Plant your hands, edge of your toes into upward facing dog. If you can, left leg goes up, come forward, shoulders over the fingertips, lower down. Plant right heel into upward facing dog, back into downward facing dog. With and return to the ethical rules and angry determination, you will eventually achieve everything. The right leg up, step the foot between the hands. Back knee down. Remain faithful that all is coming, all is evolving. Kapiyasana. Come forward. So your hands behind the back, the feet come together, the hands come all the way up off your back. Head close to your feet, a gesture of lowliness. Come all the way up to standing, arch up to back. Come back home. One last time. Raise your arms up, stretch. Feet all the way to the hands. And come down, bend your knees. Land your belly on your thighs, push your legs all the way back, try to get your seat in line with your heels, your forehead to your shins. And then the left foot back, back knee down. Again, no matter what you achieve, just do your best, keep trying. Come back down. Swing your right leg all the way up and back. What you like us to experience everything. We will at some point experience everything. Into high plank, lower down. But go as far as you can in this life, so that you never know what's going to happen in the next one. Always have some karmas to resolve. Back into downward facing dog. Just do your best. Left leg up, step the foot between the hands. Do your best on all levels, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Keep on going. Arms all the way back. Come forward, swing hands behind the back. 
the right foot to meet the mat, the Uttanasana. Come right up to standing, raise your arms over the head, arch back, and come back home. Take pause here for a moment, drop your arms down, charge and breathing. Attract everything you need, bring it all the way into the body, up the spine, to the crown on the inhale. Exhale, so send it out to all beings everywhere, and everything else we're always meant to be shared. Let's continue with some balance poses now. Okay, so we're going to start off on the left foot, Rikshasana, tree. So, um, firmly planting down the left foot, spread the toes like the roots of a tree, bring the right knee up. And bring your foot onto the inside of the thigh. If and anywhere along the way, except maybe against just against the knee, either below, above or low, below. If you have a lotus, you can bring your knee right up to your shoulder, turn the toe of foot up, and press the outside of the foot against the top of the leg. You can take a half a bind if you like with your left hand on the foot, right hand behind the back, or reach forward, take your left hand to guide the foot to the right hand to the foot. And then again, come up tall. Left hand can be a Yana Mudra. If you have the regular tree, the foot against the thigh, you can bring your arms up. Now stretch up. Be stately and magnificent. Like the tree, keep going upwards. And just like the tree, um, you can sway a little. If you sway a little bit, it's all good. If you're too rigid, then you'll snap when the wind comes around. So try to remain flexible in all, in all ways. Now from here, release the right foot, taking me up as high as you can so that when you wrap, it'll come a little bit higher on the leg and it'll be more easy to wrap. Turn to your left a little bit, point the toes. You might be able to hook the foot around the back of the left leg. If it doesn't, just keep it out. No big deal. And then the left arm over the right. Push the elbows forward and drop down to the seat. Try to get your, keep your shoulders back. Try not to come forward too much. Look like an eagle contemplating where to go next. Now come back. Let's go right into diving eagle. Bend your left knee, land your belly on your thigh, and bring your arms out to the side. The right arm, right leg comes up higher, higher than the head if you can. The head's about the height of the knee. If you need to put your hands on the ground at any point, go ahead. Be always in the same mindset, unbothered, unjudging, undisturbed. Press into your left foot and come back up. Good. So again, try it on the other side now. Plant your right foot down, anchor down the foot, spreading the toes, pressing into the toe pads, base the toes and heel. Any variation you like, your foot on the thigh or the double wrap if you like. Can't get you, actually, not the double wrap, the other, because we're doing a tree still. So hands to the heart and come up, all the way up. Take your gaze up if you can. Imagine again, you're just a tree absorbing the light and the warmth of the sun. If you're doing the lotus one, try to point the knee down, left hand can come behind the back. Hold the foot if you can, with the right hand from behind, left hand from behind. Left hand in Yana Mudra. Wherever you are is perfect if you're trying your best. And from here, release the foot. Bring the knee up way high. Turn to your right a little bit. Point the toes of the left foot so you can wrap it around the other leg. And then the right arm over the left. Left arm underneath. Push the elbows out in front. Widen the upper back and sink down lower if you can. Concentrate on steadiness. Merge with the form. Try to pretend you're the eagle again. Now take flight. Come back up. Bend your right knee. Land your belly on your thigh. And bring arms all the way up to the side like the wings of that magnificent bird. So you can arch your back a little bit. Bring your head forward, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Give yourself that X. Left foot comes up higher if you can. Imagine the eagle soaring through the air. Become that image. Now release, press into your right foot, come back up. Try 
encouraging breathing again. Inhale, the best of best, into the spine, all the way up to the crown. Exhale, send it everywhere to all beings. Next, let's do uh, ballet pose. Standing on the left foot, taking hold of the heel from the inside with the thumb behind the heel. Bring the leg out and the arm up at the same time. Now the toes and fingers always in the same line if possible. Maybe the body looks like a T, maybe more like a letter Y for more flexible. If you're having trouble bouncing, stand with your back against the wall or bring your left hand on the wall. If you flex your foot, helps it balance a little bit. Good, be magnificent, graceful, and poised like the ballet dancer. Good, if you're more flexible, those who walk can see you can take your foot from the outside. Bend your knee and bring your foot up. Your leg is right beside your head. And then you can either take your right hand to the heel or out to the side. Now from here, re-bend the leg and then release it behind. Come into warrior three. You can have the arms out forward or up to the side like an airplane. Good, straight lines like you're lying on a table. Good, now press into your left foot and come back up. Try it on the other side now. Be like a shapeshifter again, moving to the, between the forearms gracefully. Take hold of the left heel from the inside, the thumb behind the heel, and take your leg out to the side. Straight legs if possible, and then bring your leg up if you're more flexible. Open up yourself to divine grace, be magnificent. Always ready to perform at the highest level. If you want, you can also, again, if you're flexible, take the foot in front, bend your knee, Take hold the outside of the foot and push the foot all the way up again. Or as Dharmaji says, professionals, arms up to the side, wherever you are again. Just do your best. Now from here, bring your foot back down. Try not to let it drop in between. Into warrior three. Extend the arms out. Roll the left hip down so that your hip is not opening. Your hips are both facing the ground or up to the side for your airplane if that's more, if that's better for you. Extend through the crown, extend through the foot. And then press into your right foot and come back up. Charge the body again. Inhale, imagine lights of every color coming, streaming into the body, up to the crown, to the crown. Exhale, send it out to all beings. Okay, so we'll do one more. Nathura uh, Dasana, the Abhijandrasana to Nathura Dasana. It should be this way. Left foot comes forward, left hand on the ground, about 14 to 16 inches in front. Raise the left leg and bring the right arm up. So try to get your foot up as high as possible. If you can, you can look up. Make sure your fingers are not just dangling. Keep them active, straight, and all together. If you can, bend your left knee, uh, bend your right knee so you can take hold of the foot. Bend your left knee, and sometimes bending your left knee sometimes helps. So you anchor more weight, you push more weight into your foot, and then you straighten your leg again as you're pushing the foot away from you. You should look like a bow pose here. Now from here, you can look forward. If you have a balance, your hip is right over the heel. Hold your breath and take your left hand to your heart. If you have even more balance, you can take your left foot, left hand to the foot and push it all the way up and back. And then keep going. Press into your foot and come up. Now you don't even have to hold both hands to the foot. You can bring the right arm, left arm out like the dancer. Press into your left foot and come back up. Sometimes it's good to train the mind, the body to move through between forms while keeping the mind always in the same temperament, calm, unjudging, unbothered, 
the right hand reaches forward in front of the right foot, stay on a fingertip, or use a block if you can't open up your left tip. Point your hands on the ground, and once you raise your leg up, if, you'll, if you find that you're just like this and you can't open, use a block. And then open up to your left. And if you do it, you can either do it on your left, your right knee. Stretch the arm up. Look beyond your fingertips of your left hand. And look forward. Take the foot with your left hand. Pull your in towards the seat to get the foot more easy. And then bend the right knee a little bit. Really push that right foot into the ground. Imagine you're bringing more weight into the foot. Right foot. And then pull the left foot up and back. Then you can straighten out your left leg, your right leg again. Push it all the way away from the body. And again, if you like, look forward. Make sure the hip is over the heel. Stay in line. Hold your breath. Keep pulling with your left leg. And maybe your left hand can come up to your heart. Maybe you can get the hand to the foot. Push the foot close to your seat first before taking it. And if you want, press with your right foot. Hold the breath. Come up into standing ball if you like. Too much to keep your both hands on the foot. The left arm can come forward. And then from here, break the pose. Charge the body. Inhale the breast of breast into the body, up through the uh, up through to the spine, up through the spine to the crown. Exhale, send it everywhere. All everything you have is meant to be shared. So standing in the middle of the mat again. <coughs> Bring the fingertips on the same line as the elbows at the height of the shoulders. Jump or walk your feet apart. Then turn to your left. Virabhadrasana. Sink down into your left hip. Open up. Try not to allow the knee to fall inwards, the left knee. And reach through the fingertips. Left knee is roughly over the second and third toe. Look beyond your head. Enter into the warrior consciousness. Bring the right arm up to meet the left. Uh, you can either bring them together or keep them apart. Bring the left hip back, the right hip forward. Look up. The most important thing is to embody the qualities of a warrior. Here, the devotion of the warrior. Oh, it's right this year. Now, from here, bring your hands behind the back. Lean into the front foot and see if you can press the left foot straight. Inhale, lift the chest, allow the head to go back. From here, come forward again. You might need to move your right foot out a little bit to the right, so a little bit more. Make sure the back heel is down. Start off the pyramid. Center your belly over the thigh. You can bend your left knee as you're coming down so you can get your belly on the thigh. And then push as though you're trying to push the, uh, just the mouth of your feet. Push the left leg straight. Try to get your cheek on the inside of the, of the shin. Telescope your body down the leg. Imagine your chest is trying to move its way beyond the knee. Now you can stay here. If you need to, you can make it too much heavy hands over your head. You can bring your fingertips to the ground. If you want to go deeper, bend your left knee. Allow your body to slip off your leg to the right. Your shoulder now can slide down to the inside of the leg. Humble warrior. Bring your forehead down to the ground or towards the ground. The arms over the head. If it's too much, you can bring your left right knee down to the ground as well. Then stretch the mat with your feet. Adjust your humbleness here. Surrender. Now come back up. Lower the knee down. Gracefully right into Kapiyasana. Raise your hands up and pull your arms all the way back. Walk your shoulders back and forth. Try to get your chest up and your arms back over your, your fingertips, over the toes eventually. If it's too much, you can take your hands to your knee or your seat, push your seat, pull down. If you have your hands on a seat, try to remove all the wrinkles from underneath your hands. Smooth out the skin underneath your hands. Here, you can see if you can bring a back foot up. If you bring your hands to the uh, knee, press your thumb into your knee, wrap your fingers around the knee, you might be able to get your foot to come to the head very easily. Guide it in place. If your foot rests in your head, uh, if your head rests in your foot, you can bring your arms up or take over the foot as well. All 
we do those options. Group the pelvis. We have the inside of the left foot and the left foot out the edge of the mat. Bring it this way. So make sure your knee's not falling away from your body like this. That it indicates the foot too close to move it out or that this is happening. You're falling to um, your foot is going to the outside. Try to keep your shin vertical and your knee close to the shoulder. So just rock back and forth a few times. Try to get your hips to come down. Push through the back heel. And then one more time through the back heel, lengthen the leg, lower the knee down, flatten out the toes. If your hips are low enough, fall onto your right forearm, into your right hip, then roll back to your left. You can take hold of the foot with your left hand, pull on the foot, try to get your body down. Keep telescope and chest forward. If you're very flexible, your hips are already down, then the pelvis, the belly, and the chest will come down more easily. Advanced practitioners, you know how to take a bind. Go ahead, your left arm goes over the foot, underneath the leg from the outside. And then your hands join over the back. Your aim is to try to get your body lower than the leg, the knee. Look like a lizard sunning itself. If you're not, if your hips are not low enough, just stay in your hands and keep sticking your hips down. Think of a cobra pose. Try to anchor your hips down. Telescope your body forward. Eventually, your body will come down further and further. One more breath here. Reach. Exhale. Sink. Feel as though the hands were, the hips were made of lead. And we'll be coming back. Keep coming back into the hands. From here, lift the heels. And then. Uh, drag your, your foot back so that hip is over the back knee. The toes of the right foot can go to the left a little bit and bow down. So like pyramid pose, try to get your chest beyond your knee, your right, your cheek resting on the inside of the left leg. If this is easy for you, bend, come forward again into a lunge, Hanamanasana. Bend your toes under on the right foot. Slide your left foot forward. Try not to allow the left hip to come way forward at the other one. Pull the left hip back, the right hip forward, and then pulse. Don't go too hard or fast. Remember, don't go to a place of pain or suffering. This is not what you want to transmit. If you're all the way down and you want to explore other variations, you go ahead. Take your hands overhead, right to cross the wrists, and then reach back. Open yourself with divine grace. Think of all the qualities of Hanuman, ever faithful, ever knowing that anything is possible, courageous in your belief. And then release. So here, just for fun, we go into an entry for um, Vasi Stasana. If you're flexible, if you have the strength, you can do this variation. Take the reach forward, take the big toe with your two piece fingers, and pull back. A little bit so don't take the mat with you. So bend the toes under the back foot, and then from here, you have to drag the left foot towards you, lift your hips, and turn on your foot and come up into Vasi Stasana, push into your foot and come up. If that's a little bit too much from here or here, you can just drag your left foot back behind your left right knee and come into modified side plank and stay there if that's your, your uh, level or. Take your right foot uh, leg knee off the ground. Good. Now from here, wherever you're at, come back with your left foot between your hands. And then from here, Hari Bhita Pashatamasana. The right arm comes up. Angle the toe of the knee towards the right. And bring that arm all the way down to your left. Your left hand on the right. Make sure they don't stay here. You have to push the left hand down to the right so that as you're doing this, the body comes up, the center of the chest comes towards your thumbs, and then your left shoulder goes back. Look up. Too much again, lower the right knee down to the ground. Stay here if you can't, if it's hard to balance. If you want to take a bind, use the left hand, push the seat back, and move your hand a little bit in the diagonal sense so you can go underneath the leg a little bit more easily. Left arm goes over your back. 
Join the hands together, lock your fingers or hold the left wrist and pull on the left wrist to get you deeper into the twist. All these tricks come with practice, with exploration. And those who couldn't do the poses easily, it's because they had it from the past. No accidents, there's no, we all progress. We all still get deeper. Now break the pose, come back, walk around again, find your way back so the body's between your legs and you come back up. Turn to the right if you need to, you can turn all the way around if you can't see the screen anymore. Otherwise, go to the right. Bend your right knee, sink into the seat. Be steady like a warrior again. Bring your devotion, bring your um, duty to serve, never hesitating. Bring the left arm up to meet the right, turn the left foot a little bit so the toes are pointing forward, pull the left hip, push the right hip back, left hip comes forward. Look up, express the devotion, the abject devotion of the warrior to the people they serve. Good, now from here, lean into front foot, hands and hands kind of back, and you push into your right foot to straighten the leg. Move your left foot out to the left a little bit more if you need to. Make sure the left heel is down. Lift the chest so I had to go back. Come forward, hinge at the hips, Square out the hips, so right hip moves back, left hip moves forward. Bend your right knee if you like to start so you can bring your belly into line more easy and then push your foot, your leg straight by pushing against the floor with your right foot. Again, get the sensation you're stretching the mat with your feet. Bow down as though now the leg. You stay in pyramid, your right cheek on the inside of your left or right hip shin. Or if you want, Bend your right knee, slide your left foot back a little bit and slip your body up off the leg, go to your left. Humble warrior, and you come to the inside of the knee and you slide down, this will allow your body to come down further. Make your modifications if you need to, lower your left knee down, underneath your left knee if that's more appropriate for the level. Now release, bring the back knee down. Again, into Kapiyasana, your choice of your, um, of your position here, your hands on the knee or your lower back. Pull on the back and allow the head to go back. Four hands together, Kapiyasana, lower your shoulders back, try to get your index fingers over, um, um, over your toes. Lift the chest. If you're flexible, you can take your hands down. Another way to enter is to be a little bit more balanced with this one. Make sure your seat is all the way forward towards your front heel. Bring your hands down, spread your fingers, and see if you can pick the foot up so that you can find that. If you have the flexibility, maybe the hands will find the foot. The foot, if your hands are resting easily in the foot, you might be able to eventually let go of the foot. Take your arms over the head, let's go into chain pose. And break the pose. Just different forms of the pose. We will all get the chance to experience everything eventually. Take your seats back here, move your right foot out, and then bend the toes under, make your way into lizard. Push back and forth off the back foot. And then one more time to the back foot, lower the knee, slide up the toes. Make sure again that you move the right foot out a little bit so that the knee and the heel stay in the same line, roughly. If your hips are down, low, you can fall into your left form and then roll back to the right. Keep teleporting your body forward. The more you lengthen, the more the body will force you down. Again, imagine you have a big weight sitting on top of the seat. Use your imagination to find ways to allow you to achieve the effect. Merge with the form, become like a lizard who's just basking in the sun by the caring world. So you take your arms or you can get your back on the ground, you take your arms out to the side, you want to get the bind, your right arm goes in front of the leg, 
your shoulders on the foot, then your arm goes underneath the leg from the outside and passes over your back and then you turn your head. Every chance you get, meditate in the pose, try to merge with the form, become the object of your meditate meditation. Ultimately, God is the object of your meditation, he is God is in all forms. Come back onto your hands. Aldahanamanasana. So bring your left foot to the right a little bit. Bring your hips so they're back over the in line with your back uh, knee. And then bring your left uh, right toes up off the ground and bow to your right. Bow your left knee on your thigh, your chest moving forward. The right cheek on the inside of the leg, perhaps. The forms can come down as well. If this is again very easy for you, as Damaji says, don't waste your time. Go to the edge of your potential each and every time so you keep on pushing that edge further. The more progress you make, the more you stay enthusiastic in the practice. So you can balance a little bit, if you're all the way down, push through the base of the toes, if you're all the way down your variations as well, if you like. So it's like the spirit of Paramahan, courageous, devoted. And now from here, Vasti Stasana, you can again that variation of the best leg of strength, the left hand comes in, um, on the inside of the left, right side, take hold the big toe, big two pinky fingers, drag it back, and push you the right toes and left toes as well. And then keep your hips high through a big foot and try to bring it up. Do some nice entry into the pose. Of course, if that's too much, you just do it the other way. You drag the right foot back behind your left knee. Open up, and then from here you can come into your side plank and whatever variation here you like. You're telling to take the best variation, you start to keep turning on the left foot, put it on your foot, right foot goes behind, uh, it's slightly behind your left foot a little bit, just alongside the left knee. Push your hips all the way up, and so you can take your right foot up off the ground. Inside edge of the left foot is down, start to catch your knee, or catch the foot if you're flexible. Break the pose. If you have the leg up, keep it up. Turn to the front again and bring the right foot between the hands. Spin on your foot, turns along the way to the mat. So let's pause here. Padipita Pasha Kanasana. Sorry. Padotanasana. Prasavita Padotanasana. So turn your feet so the edges of your feet are long, are, are in line with the uh, short end of the mat. Take hold of the either of the ankles or you can move your hands and then slip the fingers underneath your feet. Inhale, extend to the crown, exhale, pull your body all the way in. Try to get your head in line with your middle of your feet. More flexible, bring the, your head even further in. Back head eventually lines your heels. Roll the thighs outwards, roll the shins inwards. Now, if your head's on the ground, if you want to try a tripod headstand, you may. So you bring your hands so the fingers are a little bit, are, your arms are at right angles. Your fingers are a little in line with the heels, roughly. And from here, if it press into your hands, take a breath. Some of you can do it. Straddle all the way up into your headstand. If you don't have that entry down yet, you can bring your feet back behind your wrists. Press the back just underneath the knees against your elbows and then see if you can lift your toes up off the ground. Just bend your toes back. But you can get your knees on your elbows. We call this tango. But you don't 
the control, the order of the control gives it eventually to be released up off the knees. Let the elbows spread your legs if you need to or come straight up. Again, according to your abilities. Those of you who are up in headstand, come down now. Open up your legs again, if you can, and then hold your breath as if you come close to the ground so you can land your feet right in front of the space bodies. Palms up to the sky, come all the way up. And here, we usually combine it with easy to cross them, move your feet in a little bit so your toes will be on the edge of the mat, heels will be inside. Hands on your seat, bend your knees, your knees go over your toes. Push into your seat, pull down, and then allow your chest to come up. As your chest comes up, you can straighten your legs a little bit, roll sides out with roll shins and hips. Take your head back. You can keep your hands on the seats if you feel comfortable, bring your hands one at a time down your legs. Pressing them just underneath your knees, roll sides out with roll shins and hips with your hands, or keep going if you're more flexible. Walk your hands all the way down, so you might be able to step on your, on your fingers with your heels eventually. If you're down somewhere on the legs, walk them back up. Put your hands into your seat. Push into your seat and pull down at the same time as you're coming back up. Good. Now arms up to the side. Jump your feet together. Charge the body again. Inhale, the breath to pass into the spine, up to the crown. Excess it anywhere. Good. So now from here, come down. On up, your hands on the ground. So you can either do handstand practice here or forearm stands. If you're doing handstand practice, you can always use a chair or a wall or something. So you can bring your feet against the seat, uh, the chair or the wall. Bring one foot either on the wall at the height of the hip or on the seat of the chair, of course, and bring one foot back. And see if you're looking always down a little bit beyond your fingers. Flex your feet, keep your legs bent. So you feel that and you can flex your feet and see if you can get your legs up off the wall, your foot off the wall. Keep your legs hanging towards the ground. So you, the more straight the legs are, the more that the forces are going to uh, Maybe throw you out of balance. So you want to keep your legs, your body compact. It's easier to balance. The same thing applies if you're on your forearms. Make sure your arms are not too wide. Keep going wide, 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 wider. Your chest is going to come down. It's going to collapse. You're going to collapse in the pose. So pull your elbows in a little bit closer together than the shoulders. Spread your fingers. It should look like this. Okay, and then place your hands down. You do the same thing if you're doing on a wall or if you feel comfortable, you do it beside the wall eventually. And then bring one foot up. Try to get your foot as close to your elbows as possible so you don't have to jump as much. The more you jump, if you jump too hard, you land on your back. So you try to have your foot as close to your elbows as possible so you just have to lift your heel, push into your forearms. Your hips are always in the line that they need to be for you to come up. There for a moment. If it's too much, you don't have to do headstands. Place your foot on the ground. And sometimes it's easier to come into a form stance if you have a good headstand and you can move your legs easily. Sometimes all it takes is pressing to your arms, pushing your arms very hard, and then lift your head up off the ground. And then you get into it. Now that's up straight. Eventually, you need to go to the feet. And then use one foot on the side. Sometimes it helps you to push your foot closer to the head. Down, rest in child's pose. Breathe in, 
free that all fatigue. Mm. Learn to let go of the effort instantly so you don't dig into the next pose that just follows. Clear your space. So now we're going to slide your arms forward and collide between the arms, come into cobra. Take the shoulders back. Back into Adho Savanasana. Getting ready to jump to the front of the mat. Go for a squinty move so you can do shoulder stands. Lift the heels, bend the knees. Drop your feet to where your hands are. Arms come out to the front. Fingers dangling, make sure you get the shoulders. And then lift the heels. Really flex your feet, come right up onto the roots of your toes. Lift your heels as high as you can. Move your shoulders back when you're uh, against the wall. So let's nice start to shake. Be unconcerned, be fierce in your determination. Start changing the mindset. Bring that forward down slowly. Lift the heels. Maybe our seat is almost uh, close, to, uh, close to the ground. Work behind the heels. Tuck your chin in, then seat down softly and go all the way back into plow pose to start. Let's just start in baby plow. And then from here, you can either stay here, this is where your limit is, or get ready for shoulder stance. So to prepare, bring your hands behind the back, shift to one side so you can move the arms and into the other so you get your arms further back behind your body. You shouldn't feel so you can lift back at all. Join your hands together, your wrists together, try to move your elbows as close together as possible. Then don't move your elbows, put your hands on the back, and then push your hips forward, try to get your one leg up to the sky, and then bring your other leg up to meet it. And try to have a straight line from the toes all the way down to your chin. If it's not possible, then go where, it's a, where you feel the steadiness. Your elbows might be beyond your body, and your legs might be inclined. It's all perfect if you can concentrate and bring it on the side. So as you will notice, do it now. Full notice, not a half notice. You will notice. Try to get your knees high to the shoulders, uh, your hips. Push your hands into your knees, your thighs. Wherever you are now, Close your eyes, breathe the body around, and let it take upon its full energy. We're trying to trigger divine bliss by bringing all your attention here. Changing your attention, putting strength in your eyebrows. Take a little lotus, baby Sandasana, bring the lotus against your body. If you can take the breath, the bind, go ahead. Your arms fall on the outside and bind your hands underneath your feet. Go on your seat. If you don't have a lotus, come back to plow. Control the descent. Reaching down. If you want, your thighs come against the body, the knees near the side of the head. Nothing to breathe, nowhere to go, but you go again beyond the body, the mind, and the emotions. Now those of you who are used um, used to done the deep practice, you know how to get into camel from here, you can. You roll to one side. Your feet rest against your butt. You bring your knee right beside your left shoulder. You push off the back left shoulder. And you roll your way all the way up. When you land, when you come up, your knees on the outside of the mat. And you put your into the mat. Come into camel if you like. Now the heads go back. You're not staying there. You're coming right back down. Over the shoulder comes back down. Think you're about to prepare for hair pose. Your left shoulder comes in front of the left knee. Push off the left side, push off the left side of the head, come back to the camel, then go to the other side, right away. You don't have to go always camel, you can just try to squeeze and bring your right knee down beside your knee and then the other knee beside it. So if you can, you roll all the way back up. Get into camel if you can. Lift the chest, let the head go back. And then come back, same way. Other 
otherwise, the whole time you can stay in crown if you like. Just slow the right shoulder in front of the right knee. Here again, we're going to come back down into both the fish. Hands behind your back, palms down. Your thumb tips touching, your index fingers touching. Keep your legs close, your body's come down. Press into your arms so we can you control the speed of the set. It shouldn't come down, your legs can come down with a big crash landing. The legs go down, down, down. Once your seat is on the wrists, stop when you're halfway down. And then from here, press into your lower arms, lift your back up off the ground. Pull the elbows in tighter toward, towards one another behind your heart. Lift the chest and see if you can get the top head to the ground as close to your seat as possible. Fish pose. If it's too much, keep your legs, bring your legs down. Now breathe very fast and those legs clicking down. Take your hands up from underneath. Staying ready for upward facing bowl. Take your fingertips on either side of the head, then lift the feet. Slide your head in a little bit closer to your feet, and then turn your hands around. Fingers now facing towards the feet. Fingers spread. If you can, take your head up off the ground. Upward facing bowl. If it's too much, just do your bridge pose. The back head's on the ground, your shoulders on the ground, and just push your seat up. Try to have your knees. Your, your shins perfectly straight. So if your knees are over your toes, push into your arms, try to get your chest closer to your chin, and then your knees will go behind your, your toes. Try to get your back to arch, your upper back. Looks like a wall. Okay. Upward facing bow. Do whatever you like here. Bend your toe, uh, lift your heels. Walk back and forth, try to get your chest in front of your arms. Mm. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Try to get your arms and legs straighter. If you like, raise, bring the left leg goes down first, raise the right leg up. See if you get your left, all but your left finger, index finger off the ground with your left hand. And then repeat, bring the right leg down. Try on the left leg now. Left leg goes up. Bring your knee to the chest first. Make sure you leg out. Really push into your left hand. Concentrate all your weight on the left hand so that you can eventually come onto your fingertips of your right hand and remove them one at a time until you're just on the index finger. At some point, your hand like this come right up off the leg of the floor. And then break the pose. Down onto your back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let go of all fatigue. <sighs> feel the drop down to the bottom of the field when you just fainted. Great. Now from here, put your arms back down beside your body. Lift your legs. Push into your arms. See if you can come all the way back into plow pose. Just for fun. Just keep holding your feet. Either your ankles or your big toes. And try to make your way into the boat without touching the seat down in between. If you can't take your toes or your feet or ankles easily, take hold back to the knees and just roll up into boat pose. If you can, however, challenge yourself to keep your legs straight and try to make your way up. And again, without touching your feet to the ground. So exhale, hold the breath out, and then come back up. Now from here, push the belly and the thighs together by bringing your belly forward, your legs up higher. If you need to, you can bend your knees. Now you can open up your legs like this and keep your knees bent or if you can, straighten up your legs, more flexible, bring your feet, keep your feet together, your legs together, cross your wrists behind your legs and try to bring your shins right up to your face. Boat pose. You can put your feet up if you like, or bend your knees like so. Your knees come together, your shins come together, and breathe very fast, like you're stepping down. Take 
bring your feet down. We're ready to come up to that. The feet are wide. The heels be on the edge of the mat and slide your arms out. Underneath your legs, take hold of your heels. Uh, not well. Outside the edges of the feet, close to your heels, and then see if you can get the body down to your legs. You can try to get your shoulders lowered and the knees. Keep stretching your head forward. If your knees are, if your uh, shoulders are already lower than knees, you can take your arms behind and allow the legs to come down onto your arms. Your hands are close to your on your side of your seat. Your knees facing back. Towards, um, towards the back, and then see if you get your. Forehead down, the bunch of your shoulders, maybe the chest bent in, and then the body in fire. Those who are flexible, if your arms are free, you can take the bones as well. Now, wherever you are, where your base is fine, inhale up to the crown. Exhale back down to the base is fine. Keep all the attention on the movement of the breath. to bring the feet a little bit close, um, closer in, so the feet are about three inches from each edge of the mat. Bring your three inches behind your body and lift your feet up. So depending on flexibility, the legs might be like this, you hold the opposite wrist and you're pushing the back knee to hold your seat up and your legs straighter. If you can, you're bringing your arms from the outside, through to the inside, tuck your chin in, and you have to cup your hands around your ears. So actually, if you keep calming your breath, you might be able to influence the things behind the head. Move your arms down lower than the knees so you can straighten your legs. Push your seat all the way up. Allow that to go through between your legs. Push your elbows forward in front of you. Get forward and set down the front end of the mat. And from here, release. Tuck your chin in, keep your head heavy, and roll your legs up. One more time, inch easy to cross. Now, this is a lot like cobra pose, but you're standing. Take your feet a little bit different, but same type of shape. Turn your toes out a little bit, hands on your seat, bend your knees again, push into your seat, and then pull down on the feet. Lift the chest, and then as you do this, the legs straighten the little press out with your wrist and your knees. Allow the head to go back. Do it slowly. No jerky movements, no abrupt movements. It might make you dizzy. You can move your hands along the back, down the backs of the legs, underneath your knees, or all the way down if you're more flexible. Feel as you can. If you can see the floor easily, then you can go into Uddha Dhanirasana. One arm goes over the head and the other. Back. If you're in for the, if you're in upward facing ball, one hand comes back onto the back of the one leg. Push the hips forward, bend your knees, and really push the head into the uh, back of the leg underneath your knees. Then the other hand comes into the onto the leg, and then start to lean to hips, come up. Keep your chest rising up as you come up. Good. Now from here, let's do. Dancer pose again. So any variation, stand on your left foot, bring your right knee up, take hold of the foot, and start here, bend your knee, and start to move into the pose. Arch your back. If you can, if you can, take your left hand to the foot, bend your left knee again, and push into your foot, and press it out. If you need to do it with one hand on the ground, just as you did before, go ahead, do this. So it should still feel like a boat pose. You need your leg to pull you deeper into the pose. Advanced practitioners, if you know how to do the overhead one, you can take hold of the inside, elbow close to the body, and then from here, push the elbow out to the side. Use a strap if you need to. Be careful of your joints. Know again your limitations. When your foot comes up, 
your arm comes over the head, and if you can, you can use the other hand to pull it. Roll the pose. Try it on the other side now. Left knee comes up. Sometimes you just take the foot when it's in front and then drop your knee down as you pull the foot back. Raise your right arm up, bend your right knee, and push your foot away. And when your foot's at the uh, point that's farthest away, re straighten up the right leg. So you use the tricks, you move gracefully with the poses. If you want to take the right hand to the foot, take the foot close to your seat first before you take hold of the third course, push it out. And any modification you need to do with your right hand on the ground, if you like, go ahead or your overhead one. Take hold of the foot from the outside. Bring your elbow out. Bend your right knee if you need to. And then from here, you want to move the elbow to a place where you can turn it easy without straining the joints. So no your limitations. You can just drop if you need to from the outside. And you can take your foot up over the head. Break the pulse. Now coming onto your seat for the twist. Adhamatya Andrasana. You can fold the left leg in and the right foot goes in the outside of the left knee. Your left Foot is beside your hip. If you can't get both sides of your seat down, either sit on a block or extend your left leg out to the front. And you move your right foot closer to the foot. Right hand behind the back, left arm up, and go to the right. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Turn to the right. Each time you inhale, get up higher. Lengthen the back. Exhale, go deeper into the twist. Try to get your chin eventually in line to your back shoulder, your chest open completely. Here's where you try to pull the left, uh, the right knee to the out beyond the left edge of the body. Back stay straight, try not to lean back. Come back to the front, go to the other side now. So you can fold your leg. And if you know other variations, go ahead. If you know how to take a bind, you can. Left arm goes up, so right arm goes up, left hand behind the back. And then move your right arm to the outside, the left side. You can take hold of your heel, like this one, with your right hand. And push against the back, the thigh with your arm, lifting the lower back, and then turn to your left. Imagine you can see right through your skin that the spine spiraling upwards. Sometimes you need just a visualization to get deeper into the pose. Break the pose, come onto your back for Shavasana. So just a short Shavasana, but you can always continue it after I close the practice, but just for the sake of this practice, we do the short one, then you can go further. Um, so open up your legs, the feet fall outwards, the palms facing up, the hands beyond the edges of the mat as well. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, and then all fatigue, fearful, just drop right out. All the muscles instantly dissolve, the flesh and the, just hanging off the bones. Everything sinking down. Make yourself completely relaxed in a state of surrender so you can be in a more receptive state to receive everything now. As a result of offering up your practice, everything come back that comes back to you in a favorable way. Ultimately, if you remember to just do good and be good, and to always have compassion as a driving force behind all action, thought, and word. You will always attract good outcome to you, good karma. 
and that brings about contentment. And then you feel motivated to stay on the path. But whatever does befall you takes a good understanding of the laws of karma to be able to bring that contentment as well. Everything is happening for a divine purpose. And it's not done as a punishment, but as spiritual correction. And as we go further and further along our path of self-realization with each life that we pass through, with each experience, we become more spiritually correct. doesn't stop when you leave the mat. It continues in your day-to-day -day life and all interactions. Continue to try to see God in all the forms. Not just your family and friends. All are deserving of your love and your attention and your respect. For God is in each and every being. So now prepare for that mission. Come back from Shavasana and prepare to sit. Move in a way that is gentle, as reverent, as silent. We'll close with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Instill the peace within and send out to all beings everywhere. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be receptive to the grace of God. All is within. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. If again, you need to do a little bit more shavasana to further allow the uh, benefits to integrate. Much love. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope to see you soon.